I, female, 33, have been married to my husband, Sven, male, 40, for the past five years. Sven was a hotshot investment banker when I met him, and his decisive attitude was one of the main reasons I was attracted to him. I was part of a pitch that his company reviewed, and although it didn't go through, he contacted me later and we began dating. When things got serious and we were discussing marriage, he told me that he wanted me to be a homemaker. This made some sense to us since we wanted to raise a family and I have always wanted to be an involved mother. I had worked in small CPG startups before that and the idea of letting all of that go seemed quite foreign to me. However, I knew that my husband would take care of me and I wouldn't feel bored since I had enough faith in myself to know that I would find a way to keep myself occupied. It was a different and traditional gender role and it took me a long time to reconcile with that, but I decided to do it because I really loved Sven. When we did this, he also made me sign a prenup because there was going to be a huge disparity between our earning potential now. Again, I unthinkingly signed an agreement that made it so that if we ever separated, our joint assets would be sold off and our personal savings would be kept completely separate. It was a quite clinical approach to marriage, but it put Sven's mind at ease. After that, the next few years were amazing. We got married and I got pregnant soon after. Our daughter, Kelsey, five, female, is growing up to be a bright and beautiful person, and I'm super proud of her. However, after giving birth to Kelsey, I also found myself missing the kind of work I used to do before I got married. I loved sitting with people and making their ideas come to fruition, and I wanted to get back into that field, but not as somebody's employee. I had a lot of experience under my belt, and I felt like my young age also helped me understand things like performance marketing and social media, so I used that as my USP and started an online marketing agency, specifically tailored for online businesses. Progress was slow at first, and for the first year, I only managed to gain four clients, but as my work began to pay dividends and the word of mouth spread, the business soon expanded and I currently employ over 50 people. It's all cloud-based, WFH, and we've got one of the best ROAs for our clients in the country. My work and journey have been featured in magazines and news channels, and the business is really highly valued right now. But for the upturn in my fortunes, the exact opposite seems to have happened for Sven. His firm was declared insolvent last year and began facing financial woes long before that. He became unemployed and started looking for other jobs, but the market wasn't good for his profile at the moment. However, I did my best to support my husband financially. We were still in a good place due to the luck with which I had been able to build up my business. I thought that the stability of our family as a whole and the extra time Sven got with Kelsey would be enough to help him fight his fears and deal with being unemployed. But that wasn't the case. Ever since he got laid off, my husband has been increasingly resentful and passive-aggressive regarding my role as a business owner. He keeps talking about how I should focus on our daughter and even wants to join my business as a partner. I wouldn't feel comfortable with that and I've made him well aware of that. For the past few months, he's also been asking me whether I would be interested in voiding our prenup since he thinks we're emotionally ready and do not need it. I love my husband, but this seemed extremely odd to me, and I let him know that. Again, the resentment and anger he had came out, and he accused me of holding my financial success over his head. I genuinely didn't know how to respond to that, and we left that whole argument unresolved. It's been festering away for some time now. Things came to a head last night when his parents came over for dinner and we had an ugly fight which led to Sven walking out on me and Kelsey. My father-in-law and mother-in-law have always been distant from me and the difference in age between me and Sven coupled with the fact that I wasn't earning much when I met him 
has made them label me as a gold digger. They've never said it to my face, of course, but I can tell from the way they ice me out when I was first introduced to the family and their lack of interaction with me and Kelsey. As you can imagine, when Sven told me his parents were flying in for dinner with him and staying in the city for a few days, I was mentally preparing for it even before they arrived. I noticed that conversation during dinner was stilted, even more than usual. And it just felt like Sven and his parents were in on something I wasn't a part of. I now 100% feel like Sven told his parents about the prenup issue and even planned a dinner just so they could gang up on me. It started casually enough with my father-in-law congratulating me on my business success and asking a few questions about its valuation. Then he said that he and mother-in-law don't have a prenup and now it's helped them gain a lot of trust with each other, like it was rehearsed. Sven then jumped in and said, wow, dad, that sounds great. OP and I do have a prenup, but I feel like I was too hasty in making her sign it. I've been talking to her and we might void it. What do you think? Father-in-law and mother-in-law enthusiastically agreed and I was put on the spot. I had to carefully maneuver and say, well, guys, I don't feel comfortable with it. And I think Sven made that decision when we got married. And although I didn't like it then, I don't think we should change it now. The money I make is for us, not for me. So it doesn't even matter anyways. From there, the conversation just got worse and worse until I ended up in basically a full-blown shouting match with Sven. Thankfully, Kelsey wasn't at the dinner table and didn't have to witness her parents at each other's throats, but the whole incident made Sven walk out of the house with his parents. He's going to stay with them unless I make changes to the prenup because he feels disrespected by the income disparity. I never expected this from my husband and I know it's a walking red flag, but AITA for saying I didn't agree with it back then, but I do now? It's clearly only because I'm earning more now that I don't want to void it. And it's making me understand Sven's point of view from our engagement too. But he's right. It does boil down to trust and I don't want to lose my husband and father of my child over this. Update 1. It's been over a week and Sven has been ghosting me. It's super tough to explain to Kelsey and I've used the excuse that her dad is away on a trip to make her feel at ease. I finally cracked and messaged his parents to ask whether Sven was going to come back anytime soon. They said he had left their hotel the very next day, claiming that he was going to go back home. Now, both my in-laws don't like me, but the fact that Sven lied to them had us working together for a little while. When they texted him, he kept up the ruse that he was with me and working on the relationship, but that was not the case. I'm beginning to fear the worst, and I think that Sven may be having an affair. But until he decides to speak to me, there's no way of knowing. Update 2 Sven came back, and I immediately confronted him about his lies. He was shocked that I had figured it out. But when his parents also called him and asked for an answer, he knew there was no way to wheedle out of it. He broke down and begged for forgiveness, saying that he'd been cheating on me for the past four months. I was beyond heartbroken, and it suddenly made so much sense as to why he had been begging to change the prenup. I asked him to his face, were you going to take my money and run off with someone who you barely know? Do you not care about your daughter at all? It was one of the worst confrontations I've ever had, and there's no doubt in my mind that I want a divorce. My in-laws, to my surprise, called and told me how sorry they were that their son had treated me so poorly. I was right. They had initially thought of me as a gold digger, but they brought it up themselves and profusely apologized for ever having that opinion of me. They validated me as a person, mother, and business owner. And my father-in-law told me that he was going to help me expand if I ever need it. He apparently has some contacts which may come in handy. Update 3. Divorce proceedings are ongoing and it may take about a year. Sven has moved in with his side piece in some crappy apartment downtown. 
His parents are barely speaking to him and are finally making a bond with Kelsey. I have realized, as much as I dislike them, the experience of getting to know them outside of the scope of in-laws has made me find them to be really good friends and mentors. At least, that's the silver lining of this whole escapade. I feel like I'm still getting my bearings when it comes to being single, but I'm putting myself toward raising Kelsey and growing personally to greater heights. It's a rough time, but I'll get through it. NTA, your husband sounds like a misogynistic a-hole. It's clear that his ego couldn't take the fact that you were making more than him. And instead of learning to lean on you during his unemployment, he behaved like an immature jerk who doesn't care about his family. Good riddance to him. NTA, Sven sounds like a man-child. I couldn't believe my eyes when I was reading through the updates and found out that he'd been cheating on you. Although that would explain his sudden interest in the prenup. I hope you can get through this, OP. Next story. Hi, everyone. Sorry this one is kind of weird, or is it? I feel like I'm going insane. My mom's side of the family is religious. My mom brought us to church every week, did all the sacraments, sent us to Catholic school our whole lives, but it doesn't bother her that I'm not a believer. She said she could tell I was skeptical even as a child. I'm very spiritual. There's only a couple of older family members that it really bothers at all, but it's not usually a topic of conversation. If they want to go to church or pray before dinner, I just go with the flow. We were all together a couple of weeks ago and my cousin's baby was playing on the floor and she kept putting her head on the ground while standing, so it looks like she's about to do a handstand, and just staying there. A cousin's wife laughed, saying she's been doing that daily for over a week now. I laughed too and said, in some cultures they say that means the child is looking for their sibling to be careful. All but two of the older relatives laughed and cousin's wife cracked the joke about knocking the baby over because that was the last thing they needed. We moved on. Got a call about a week ago with my aunt screaming at me. She was barely making any sense and eventually my uncle took the phone from her and said something about keeping the witchcraft away from them and how dare I ruin something that should have been a special private moment between husband and wife and then taking away their right to announce their way. I didn't even know what they were talking about. Whenever I tried to speak, they cut me off to yell more, so I hung up and called my mom asking what was going on. So it turns out cousin's wife is actually pregnant. I called to congratulate them, but the wife wouldn't speak to me. And my cousin said I should have kept my nose out of their business and to not call them again. I've been getting texts from other family members straight up calling me a devil worshipper or telling me I overstepped. At the very least, I now know I was naive about how a lot of my family members feel about my beliefs. At first, I was just going to ignore it and let everything settle like the family usually does, but the reaction is making me second guess myself and I'm definitely willing to apologize if I really did something wrong that I'm just not seeing. Hell, even if I'm not the a-hole, I'm considering an apology because I really love my cousin and hate that we're not on good terms. So Reddit, AITA for spoiling my cousin's pregnancy, discovery, announcement? Update. Wow, wow, wow. This took a turn. My cousin came over and broke down apologizing. It turns out he had a vasectomy a year ago. I know it can fail sometimes, but I guess she and or him didn't know that, so the truth came out. Even if they had known that vasectomies don't always work, everyone would have known about her cheating because the baby is going to be mixed race. He hasn't told anyone else in the family because he's too embarrassed. He kept apologizing over and over, and of course, I told him to not blame himself or worry about me at all. I've never seen him like this. He's like a brother to me. I was even going to be a groomswoman at the wedding before his wife vetoed it. I'm just so sad for him. 
I don't know if, when I'll update again, because I want to focus on being there for my cousin and supporting him and making decisions about his future. You can probably guess how my family feels about abortion. Thanks for all the comments letting me know I'm not crazy. She is. And a cheater. NTA, how dare you make a joke about something you know absolutely nothing about and ended up spoiling their announcements. Good Lord, you made a joke. How could they think you were spoiling an announcement you had no idea of? It was sheer coincidence that you said that and she actually was pregnant. And it wasn't like you came out and said, hey, cousin's name, is pregnant, guys. That would have been spoiling it. You were teasing. NTA, they're all as bad as a box of frogs. Get angry, stay angry and tell anyone who asks that you deserve an apology at the very least for the way you were screamed at, accused of witchcraft and blamed for something so ridiculous. If this happened to me, I would probably never speak to any of them again. I know that's probably impossible for you to contemplate, which is fair enough. But these are not the reactions of normal, rational people. They are treating you with contempt and disrespect. Not very Christian, is it? Next story. My sister, 33, female, is an absolute health nut and her obsession with what she considers a healthy diet has only worsened over time. I, 28, male, am super close with my nephew, 11, male, and we will often hang out and do activities together and sometimes he will spend the night at my apartment. His dad isn't in the picture, so I try to be a good male figure in his life. I usually try to keep our meals relatively healthy, although maybe not up to my sister's standards, and half of the time my sister will send him over with pre-made meals that she approves of anyways. Last Friday, my nephew came to hang out for a movie video game night. My sister didn't send him over with any meals this time and I was craving pizza, so I decided what the hell and had some delivered. It was delicious. The next morning, I made bacon omelets with potatoes and a side of fruit. My nephew loved all of it. Initially, I had planned to drop my nephew off, but my sister was running errands nearby already and so she dropped in to pick him up. She could smell the bacon smell in my apartment and also saw the empty pizza box and totally flipped her shit. She asked me if the bacon was turkey bacon. It wasn't. She then asked if the pizza was made with cauliflower crust. It wasn't. I told my sister to stop being such an omen mom and rage ensued after that. She told me that I no longer have overnight privileges with my nephew because I can't be trusted to feed him properly. Also, Want to add, my nephew is healthy and is never hungry, but he also never gets to indulge in anything that my sister views as even remotely bad for you. He has no allergies or anything that would require restriction of any kind of food or drink. Lastly, my sister has never provided me with any sort of guide of foods that she approves of. It's been a few days and she's still mad at me and has taken huge offense to the almond mom comment that I made. AITA? NTA. Mom is setting up her son for an unhealthy relationship with bad food in the future. She's a bit crazy. I don't agree with people saying you should basically just bend to every whim for her because to me she seemingly has no real concern or issue that would make it so her kid can't have those foods in moderation of course. Parents aren't always right. If she cares so much about what he eats she needs to send the food with your nephew every time he visits or give you money and a guide of what he can eat. NTA, anyone who thinks cauliflower crust pizza is something to feed to children needs their head examined. That stuff is gross. Your sister is just setting up her son for massive ED issues by making sure he's never allowed to have anything fun to eat for no other reason than her own obsessive issues with food. He's going to make a point of eating anything and everything he can get his hands on when he's out of her sight if she keeps treating him like some sort of prisoner having to be punished as far as meals are concerned. NTA, because she's never provided a guide or specifically outlawed items. She's jumped the gun on barring you from seeing your nephew. From an ethical perspective, at least she never advised you what the boundary was nor what the consequences would be for ignoring it. 
You may want to find articles on children who were raised never getting to eat sweets and then become obese as adults because all they do is eat the sweets they couldn't have as a child. Maybe that might help your sister to see the damage she's doing by being so strict, uptight and controlling. Modeling good behaviors means showing kids how to eat healthily and enjoyably. She's going to give her kids an eating disorder or body dysmorphia if she keeps this up. Once she realizes the benefit of all the free labor you've been providing, I'm sure she'll come around. Stay tuned for more stories from Argo Relationships.